How are you guys doing? Today we're going to practice proving that triangles are congruent by finding all six corresponding sides and angles. Okay, so first of all, when you read a question like number one, you should recognize this notation because this is a com composition of reflections. And something to notice about this one, it does not tell us that these lines M and P are parallel. So we assume that they're intersecting. Whenever we have a composite of reflections over intersecting lines, then we have a rotation. It's important to identify this so that you know what to put in your reasons column. Okay? So just like we've been doing for the past few days, you always start out with the given statement, as is. And if there's anything in a picture, you could add that to the given also. And then we know in a rotation, two things, two main things are preserved. One is angle measure, and the other one is distance. So it doesn't matter which one you pick first. You're just going to list out all your corresponding sides. So I'm going to start with angles. Angle C, because it's first, corresponds with angle D. Angle A, congruent to angle M. And angle R would be congruent to angle V. And for my reason, I just say angle measure is preserved. under a rotation. So it's important to just kind of note we've stated that all three angles are congruent. Now we need to state that all three sides are congruent. So CA, because it's the first two letters, would correspond with DM. AR would be congruent to MV. And then lastly, CR would be congruent to DV. So I'm just matching up my letters according to their position in this congruency statement. And the reason why those three sides are congruent is because distance is preserved. Under a rotation. So now I've shown that all three sides are indeed congruent. So now I've got SSS, three sides congruent, AAA, three angles congruent. So therefore, my triangles have to be congruent because of SSS, AAA. OK? This example and any example like this with the notation will always look like this. The only thing that you need to do is identify if it's a regular reflection, just one R, and then if it's got two R's, it will either be a rotation or a translation. And then that's, once you identify that, that's what you would put in your reasons column. Okay, let's try one like example number two. So first of all, I'm going to put my given And then I noticed that in the picture, it's telling me that these two angles are right angles, which means they're the same. So because that's given to me in the picture, I also want to add that onto my given. Okay, now I'm ready to go. So I'm going to mark up my diagram based on what they're telling me. EI, that's this right here bisects angle NEC, so NEC, that's this big angle. If that bisects angle NEC, that then tells me that these two smaller angles are congruent, so that's what I'm going to put next. Angle NEI is congruent to angle CEI because this is bisecting it, and the definition of a bisector tells us that these would be congruent. So in my reasons, I put definition of bisector. Now I'm going to continue reading the given. So I is the midpoint of NC. Here's NC. 
I is the midpoint, which means it's right in the middle. So that then tells me those two smaller segments are then congruent. So that's the next thing that I'm going to put into my proof. And again, I is a midpoint, so that word helps me identify what to put in the reasons. Definition of midpoint. Okay, I've got, I'm just going to check real quick and see what I've got. I've got a side, I have an angle, I have another angle, and I have a side. So I'm missing a side and I'm missing another angle. Anytime you're missing the third angle, that's always going to be the third angle theorem. So in this case, my last angles I'm missing, angle N congruent to angle C, because third angle theorem. And I'm missing one more side, which would be IE. It is the same in both triangles. I notice that they're kind of overlapping. So IE is congruent to IE. Well, that means it's congruent to itself, which would be reflexive. So now I've got my last missing angle and my last missing side. So now I have SSS AAA, so I'm done. Thanks for watching. Um, if you still need some help, watch the next video. I go through a few more examples on this worksheet. And then you should also be able to practice the, the proofs that have parallel lines, because that's a little bit of a combination of what we are doing now and what we did before. Okay? Thanks for watching.